Welcome to Worth the War. My name is Kimmy. Here at Worth the War, we're rethinking love, preparing people for healthy relationships and how to avoid abuse. If you think we can do a better job with love and relationships than we're doing in today's culture, then you found the exact right channel. Today, the topic of our video is stop looking for your soulmate. I fully expect that I'm going to have some major messages coming from good friends that I have in my social media communities who believe wholeheartedly and actually have based their entire view of love and relationship on this idea of a soulmate. Bottom line, I'm going to argue like I would for any other worldview. We can have differences of opinion. The important part is we just have to give good reasons for them. I have reasons for what I believe when it comes to that and this video is going to be about sharing some of the reasons that I think the idea of a soulmate is actually a dangerous thing for your love and relationship future. Not a good thing. When we start talking about what it means to have a soulmate, often people just think that's that someone we love and we love them well. And that's all good and fine, but that's not what everybody means by the idea of a soulmate. When we have the idea there is one person who is destined for us, that if we do anything, we try to push it away, that it's all going to work out fine. It's meant to be is the, another way of putting it. It's kind of the fairy tale version of love. We're confusing so much about what it means to actually choose to love someone. Here at Worth the War, we're always first and foremost going to define love as a verb, something that we do for someone. Someone, something we choose, someone that we decide to love and we actually pour our love out on and we sacrifice for. If we think about the idea of a soulmate, we're talking more about a magical connection, something that we really don't have a lot of decision making in. If we want to be able to figure out what is healthy, we have to be able to identify the, the difference between attraction and lust and attachment. And when we can do that, it kind of starts to demystify a little bit the, the idea of the soulmate because often what a soulmate is, is someone that we have all three of those things for. It doesn't mean it's not a choice still. That means that we are attracted to them physically and emotionally and mentally as well as attached to them. That's a beautiful thing. It isn't necessarily, however, a magical thing. What we're going to talk about next kind of explains why the magical aspect that we kind of hold back in our mind actually might be the most dangerous part. One of the things that is really dangerous about the idea of a soulmate is it can make us stay in places that aren't really healthy. So if we feel that we have this connection with someone that's magical and amazing, and yet there are certain aspects of it that are super unhealthy or even abusive, we have to be careful how we define these things because it might be that we're actually seeing the signs that we need to move on but we're not going to move on because we think there are destined soulmate which brings us to the next point this idea of destiny when it comes to healthy relationships i don't know anyone who's been married 50 years that says destiny can ever be more important than hard work relationships are the most beautiful thing that you will ever work so hard at so if we want to have this idea that we're going to have a relationship that's going to go the long haul we have to understand that destiny doesn't replace that hard work but if we believe it's magical, we might really get confused with that. And when it starts to go south, we take away the soulmate moniker and we stick some other title on it. It wasn't good enough. They were evil, whatever we want to do. What made them not a soulmate is that it either didn't work or it was unhealthy. The next thing in an idealistic idea of a soulmate can do to really mess with you is it messes with your present. If you met somebody when you were 21 and somehow you put that title on them, they were your soulmate, didn't work out. Maybe they moved on, found someone new, maybe they didn't. And deep down, you really believed that. You really believe there's a magical thing called a soulmate and that if you wait and if you are consistent, you will absolutely have what you're supposed to have. Well, the problem with that is you may be missing people who are really healthier for you now. The person that you are now is unlikely to be the same person that even knew that person way back when. This idea of a magical person that you should just wait around for or just fill in time and eventually they'll come back around could be a real devastation for your future love life. It could also be that you will miss people who are more full-bodied for what you actually need today. Somebody that could actually meet all of these things for you that you would really love to have in a companion and somebody that you could pour out and actually make their lives better. But they're always going to be half-life to you as long as you think there's somebody waiting out there that's your destiny and soulmate that's going to come back someday. It may not be quite as dramatic in that on everybody's life, but if you've ever even the back of your mind thought, well, that person was the right person for me. If it's meant to be, it'll still work out. You're basically taking away from the relationships that you're in today. So be very careful with the idea of the soulmate. It can actually be poison to a really healthy and vibrant relationship today. Another thing that goes along with this idea of a magical soulmate and a view of healthy love and relationship is this idea that if you have something and you set it free, if it comes back to you, it's yours. If not, it never was. This idea really does get a little confusing. I'm not going to advocate you hang on to a relationship that's abusive or it's dark or there's a problem with it. But let's be honest, if you have a really healthy and good and solid relationship and you set it free, they may just go find something else that's really healthy, good and solid. Because unless you're buying into this idea that there's some kind of magical magnet that's going to pull you back to this person every time you push them away, you may just be giving up a really healthy and good relationship. Make sure you don't get into a gambling mindset that see how much they'll take before they totally give up or they leave. That really is a part of unhealthy relationships 
relationships that is more and more common today in the modern love concept. But when it comes right down to it, if you have a healthy and good solid relationship, you should want to build into that because when things happen in life that are hard later, you're going to want to have a really good solid foundation. If all you've literally done is eat away at that, this idea of a magical bond that's going to hold you together no matter what, you might just be cutting off your nose to spite your face. So you really want to make sure that you don't buy into the idea that a soulmate is somebody that will take whatever you throw at it and it'll still just work out all fine. A really healthy love relationship, people that have been married for decades will tell you there is no substitute for treating each other kindly and pouring into the relationship, especially when things are going well. So when we think about these magical ideas of soulmates, they're destiny driven, they're attraction based. We let things go and hope that they'll come back to us. And then we also let these kind of ideas mess with our present and really blow any chances we might have to help have healthy relationships after we've designated someone to be our supposed soulmate. These things can all be really dangerous to our happy, healthy love relationships. When it comes to healthy love and relationship, it's not going to be a magical soulmate match. It's going to be something much better than that. In the real world, it's two imperfect people who decide they want to be together and they are willing to work on them. So if you find a good heart, don't worry about what's stashed two decades back in a supposed soulmate. Look right into their eyes and make them your soulmate. You can do that. It's not a magical spell. And make sure they have a healthy idea of love. Make sure you talk about that because you don't want them thinking about somebody that's in their past either. If we're not honest about how we look at things like soulmates, we're not going to have much of a shot of being happy. I hope somehow this has been really helpful for you. I can only promise you that the real deal of love and relationship is a whole lot better than the magical one and you get to decide who you give it to. I hope that you'll follow us, like, leave some comments, let us know what you think about this idea of a soulmate actually being just the person that you choose to love for the rest of your life. Thank you for taking the time to be here. I know there's a lot of other channels you could be watching and it means the world. Have a great rest of your day.